Thank you for that. Uh, we're going to get back into our taken care of while well, you are the man. Wow, there's something good. Uh, we're going to get back into our conversation on finding seller listings. Page 49 of Shift. Gary says, hold on one second, let me change the view. Cool. All right, Gary says, just because the market has moved from more to less doesn't necessarily mean you have to. First of all, I think less is a matter of perspective. Uh, the number I gave you yesterday was wrong. So let me correct that. Uh, I mentioned a number of properties that have been listed in Coral Springs and Parkland. And I told you yesterday that it was for the month. It wasn't, it's a year to date number. Uh, I thought the number was a little high for seven days through February. So I went back and looked again and sure enough, I was wrong, happens often. Uh, however, still, 189 listings just in Coral Springs Parkland. Now, to me, that means there's plenty of opportunity out there for me to hit my goals. If there's 189 people who listed their home so far this year, just in Coral Springs and Parkland, then I can certainly find enough people who wanna sell their home in South Florida in order for me hit my goals yes or yes? yes right so my question would be are you getting your unfair share and, and that's a question that i posted on the private facebook page here in coral springs today and i'm sure there's some people who won't necessarily like that but it's okay i, I want to encourage you to motivate you to push you to do more than you're comfortable doing because you have potential to do so much more than you think you do. And as leads become fewer, you must recognize the situation and make a more concerted effort to generate them. As seller listings become fewer, you must make a more concerted effort to find seller listings. You can't just sit back. When the market is hot, your phone rings, people call you and say, hey, I wanna put my house on the market, awesome. And then you go list it and sell it in one day and tell everybody how amazing you are. And all you did was answer a phone. Now I really made some people mad at me, oh well. <laughs> I'm good at that. You must be more rigorous and resolute in your lead generation than ever before and more so than anyone else. More so than anyone else means what? Everybody. Everybody and it's a what? A must. Competition. Competition. <laughs> it's a competition. Are you guys competitive? Yes. You like to win? Yes. Yeah, me too. Me too. When I pull that report and I look at our competition, other real estate offices, and I see that somebody took more listings than we did, how do you think that makes me feel? Mm, not good. <laughs> right, Topo? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. In fact, now is the time to shift your lead generation activities into the highest gear possible. What does that look like for you? What is the highest gear possible? What does that look like for you? All right, so 14 strategies in order to find more seller listings. We're gonna fly through these and then we're gonna go deep on one. Top to top producing agents. Call real estate agents who are taking lots of listings and ask them, what do you got coming on the market? I've got a buyer looking for blank, blank, blank. Let me know if you've got anything coming on the market that would fit that criteria. Find properties before they hit the MLS. Search for abandoned properties and absentee owners. Build your inventory with home builders. Convert FISVOs to listings, prospect expired listings. Convert rental properties into listings. Help homeowners in pre-foreclosure. Work with bankruptcy, divorce, and probate attorneys. For those of you who are writing as fast as you can physically write, this is all in Survive to Thrive, by the way. I typed it up for you and put it in our, on our page over the weekend. So it's there. Not that I don't want you to take notes, but you've got this. If you don't have it, guys, I'll send it to you. There you go. Circle prospect. You have three opportunities to circle prospect. Every time you take a new listing, 
around every single home um, open house and after every property that sold. And does it have to be your listing for you to circle prospects? Say no. Pick a property that recently sold in a neighborhood that you want to work. Pick a property that recently sold in a neighborhood that you have a buyer for and call everybody in the neighborhood. Go knock on their door. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner. My name is John Dietz. Don't say that unless you're John Dietz. That's weird. <laughs> My name is John Dietz. I'm a real estate agent with Keller Williams Realty. And the reason I popped by today is a home in your neighborhood recently sold for top dollar. And I have a buyer that's looking for a home like yours. Just curious, who do you know that might be thinking of selling their home in the next six months? How about... Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, the last three properties in your neighborhood that sold, sold for $525, $550, and $560,000. Here's the cops. Give them a copy. Show them. Don't tell them. And I'm confident that I can get even more than that for your home. If we could get $600,000 for your home, would you consider selling your home? You'll be shocked, Alan Waxman shared this at Stats on Friday, that he thought about selling their home when he got this letter in the mail. Have a going live strategy. Rather than taking a listing today, taking photographs tomorrow, putting it on the MLS the next day, why don't you have every single listing you take go live on Monday or Tuesday to an open house Saturday and Sunday before it goes live, before you show it to anyone and invite everybody to the open house. And then every single person who walks in the door, do you have a home you need to sell? 60% of homeowners will visit an open house before they put their home on the market. So many real estate agents are focused on doing open houses in order to find buyers. In 15 years of being a real estate agent and 15 years of listing, an average of 12 to 15 homes every single month, I did open houses often. And I didn't do them to find buyers because I've never worked with a buyer in my entire real estate career. Selling over 100 homes a year, I've never worked with a buyer. And I did open houses to find listings. Every single person who walked in the door, so is your home on the market. No, it's not. Oh, you're thinking of selling. Cool. Would you like a market analysis on your home? Would it be better if I email that to you? Or can we get together tomorrow? Would four o'clock be okay with you or would five be better? Why not? The four laws of your database. Build a database. Feed it every day. Communicate with it in a systematic way. Every conversation should end with, hey, by the way, who do you know that might be thinking of selling their home? Stop asking people if they know anybody that's looking to buy or sell. You don't need more buyers. You need sellers. Read the Aladdin factor. You get what you ask for. Ask for seller listings. Stop asking for buyers. You've got enough. Who do you know that's looking to sell? Uh, golden letters. Send a letter out to a subdivision, to your database, to a group based on how you have them in your database, letting them know the market is hot. Homes are selling fast. Prices are higher than they ever have been in the history of real estate. Your home is worth more today than it ever has been. And just out of curiosity, have you thought about selling your home? What's your make me move price? Give me a call. We might be able to get that price. Use guaranteed listings and no hassle listings in order to create more opportunities. All right. I wanna go deep on working for sell by owners and Herve, you inspired this. So um, the purpose of the call is to get the appointment. There is no other reason to make that call other than you get the appointment. So if I called Michael and I said, hey, Michael, my name's John Dietz. Remember, don't say that if you're not me, that's weird. My name's John Dietz. I'm a real estate agent with Keller Williams Realty and looks like you're selling your home by owner. Just out of curiosity, is it still available? And if I had an offer on your home today, 
would you want me to bring you the offer? Now, I don't want to list my house. Cool, I want to help you sell your home. And if I had an offer today, would you want me to bring you the offer? Now, here's the point, guys. You, you need to see their house in order to bring them an offer, okay? You're scheduling an appointment. The purpose of the call is to get an appointment. There is nothing they can say that would cause you not to go. Don't judge away opportunity. I'm asking a million dollars for my home. And you know it's not worth more than $500,000. I'm exaggerating to make a point, okay? I'm exaggerating to make a point. Now, in reality, it's probably more like the home is worth 950, they're asking a million. That's fine. Go anyways. It doesn't matter if they're realistic or not. I'm only paying 1% if you bring me a buyer. Cool, does one o'clock work or would two be better for you? Right? I'm never gonna list my house. If I do, I already have a real estate agent. Most real estate agents would not go on these appointments. You hear me? And there's coaching companies that are coaching them to not go on the appointment. They're telling them qualify and only go if they're gonna list their house. And then I'm telling you, don't listen to that. Listing 12 to 15 homes every single month for 15 years. By the way, I'm not sharing this with you to brag, so don't hear that. Here's the message I want you to hear. I don't want you to be impressed. I want to impress upon you that if I can do it, you can do it. In 15 years of listing 12 to 15 homes every single month, I can't tell you over a 15 year period, 100 listings plus that I wouldn't have got if I was following a model that said qualify before you go. You're judging away opportunities, stop doing that. I have real estate agents come to me, um, Nellie, and they'll say, John, I'm so excited, I got an appointment. Awesome, good for you. Yeah, but they're not serious, they're not motivated. It really wasn't a good appointment. And I asked them, what's your definition of a good appointment? Well, an appointment that turns into a listing appointment. Hmm. Do you know in 15 years of going on thousands of appointments, I've never had one with a for sale by owner or an expired when I was just going to see their house. I've never had one that turned into a listing appointment the first time I went to see them. Never. Now, I've had many that turned in the listing appointment the next day or the following week. And most of the time, most of the time being 90% plus, it was on average six to eight weeks later. Now, if I'm judging opportunity away, I don't get those listings. So a good appointment for me is we met face-to-face, -face, mission accomplished. Now, if the purpose of the call is to go on an appointment. The purpose of the appointment is to build a foundation to follow up from. Please write that down. Build a foundation to follow up from. Number two, it's to convey that you care about them, that they can trust you, and that you know what you're doing. Say that again. It's to convey that you care about them, that they can trust you, and that you know what you're doing. Number three, the purpose of the appointment is to look for opportunity. And then lastly, number four, the purpose of the appointment is to set up the next conversation. All right, now I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step on how to do those four things. Number one, Call ahead of time to confirm the appointment. If you're meeting with them this afternoon at four o'clock, hey, Herve, John Dietz, Keller Williams Realty, just confirming we're meeting today at 4 p.m. Looking forward to seeing you at four. Make it a great day. Now, if you get voicemail, leave a message and go. Now, have I ever gone on an appointment and got stood up? 100%, yes, many, many times. Now the call, 
The follow-up call when you get stood up is, hey, Michael, John Deeds, Keller Williams Realty. I am so sorry, man. I thought we had an appointment yesterday at 4 p.m. and I probably wrote the time down wrong. Please forgive me and I would love to reschedule the appointment. Not, hey, where were you? <laughs> I was at your house at four o'clock and you weren't there? Now, most of the time you're gonna hear, oh, that's okay. Yes, I would love to reschedule. Come over tomorrow at four. I promise you, you've just endeared yourself to that homeowner even more. Now, do you think they feel they have a higher sense of responsibility to be there the next day at four o'clock. 100% yes. So call ahead of time and confirm. Number two, dress for success. Simple. Dress for success. You are a professional. Dress like a professional. If you met, went to meet with an attorney and the attorney met you in her office with shorts and flip-flops on, how do you feel about that? Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you guys have heard of Morgan and Morgan, right? How could you not? They're on the radio like every five seconds. If you went to meet with Mr. Morgan or Mrs. Morgan, do you think they meet you at the office in shorts and flip flops? Maybe. No, not at all. Now, that's an exaggeration again. They also wouldn't meet you with dress slacks, dress shirt and dirty shoes or anything that's out of place. Don't sweat the small stuff, absolutely sweat the small stuff, right? So dress for success. Number three, make a great first impression. This is called your Kodak moment. And you have 20 seconds, if that, to make a great first impression. Now, how do you make a great first impression? Park in the street, don't park in the driveway. If your appointment is at four, knock on the door at 4 p.m., not at 4.05. You're late. Do I care about you? No, because I'm late. Can you trust me? No, because I said I would be here at four and I'm here at 4.05. If your appointment is at four, knock on the door at 4 p.m. Now, I'm going to knock on the door. I've got a notebook in my hand, a pen to take notes, and a business card. That's all I'm bringing. If you bring a CMA, if you bring listing materials, if you come ready to have a listing conversation, can they trust you? No, because you told them that you were just coming to see their home so that you could potentially bring them an offer. And now you showed up with listing paperwork. You're a liar. Can they trust you? No. I'm bringing a notebook to take notes, a pen to take notes, and a business card. That's it. Now, I'm going to knock on the door. Clarissa opens the door. Hi, Clarissa. I'm John Dietz. We had an appointment at 4 p.m., and it's 4 p.m. May I come in? Yes. Absolutely. Walk in the front door. Wow, you have a beautiful home. I'm super excited to be here. And what I would love is if you can give me a tour of your home. Now, before we go any further, would you like me to take my shoes off or are my shoes okay? Be different. I promise you all the other real estate agents that are coming to visit this person are walking right in the door. Hi, I'm Billy Bob with Ego Realty and boy, are you lucky I'm here. I am absolutely the best realtor in all of Coral Springs. Um, and uh, just going to look around your house. You stay over there, get out of my way. And what the heck were you thinking about here? Purple fuzzy wallpaper? That's got to go. Uh, shag carpeting? Really? You, did you do this in the 70s? What's up with that? <laughs> Don't be Billy Bob. Be okay. professional. Make a great first impression. Teresa, John Dietz, we had an appointment for 4 p.m. Smile, you're more likable when you smile. Have enthusiasm. If I show up, Teresa, I'm John, you know, Keller Williams, whatever. Uh, and 
Yeah, show me your house, I guess. I mean, you're you're not going to sell it anyways. I, you're never going to hire me. So, you know, and, and a million dollars, really? Are you nuts? But um, all right, let's get this out of the way. Show me your house. Do I care about Carissa? Can she trust me? No. Be enthusiastic. They're interviewing you. Even if they said they're never going to list their home, they're interviewing you. From the moment you show up at the front door, you're interviewing for the job. Hey, I'm so excited to be here. You have a beautiful home. Thank you so much. And what I'd love is for you to take me on the tour of your home. I'll ask a few questions. I'm going to take lots of notes because this is the information I'm going to use to help you sell your home. Write it down. It's exactly how you deliver it. I'm going to take lots of notes because this is the information I'm going to use to help you sell your home. Now, as you're touring their house, you're conveying that you care about them. They can trust you, that you know what you're doing. A real estate agent that knows what they're doing is going to ask questions that a buyer would ask in order to be able to tell all of their buyers all of the features and benefits of your home. So as I'm touring the home, hardwood floors, crown molding, vaulted ceilings, updated gourmet kitchen, I'm writing this down as I'm talking. Clarissa, I love your kitchen. Thank you, John. Holy cow, this is absolutely beautiful. Granite countertops? Yes. Yes, can you tell by looking at them? I don't know. I can't. There's lots of different solid surface countertops, right? Ask. Travertine floors, stainless steel appliances. Wow, I love your kitchen. Be enthusiastic. Like their house. Write that down. I've had lots of sellers say to me, John, so-and-so was over here and they didn't even like my house. Why would I hire them? And my response to that is always, I don't know. I love your home. Hire me. <laughs> John, they didn't even ask any questions. They didn't take any notes. How are they going to sell my home? I've had homeowners say that to me, right? Okay. So you're taking notes. You're liking their home. You're asking questions. How old is the roof? How old is the AC system? Looks like the windows have been updated since your home was built. When did you do that? When they say, I've got a new roof. New when? When did you replace the roof? 2005. It's 2022. <laughs> Is it new? No. Is it important to know that? Yes. yes. Because in my mind, I'm taking notes that I'm going to use when I list this house. And when I list it, I'm going to write in my listing, roof was, re was replaced in 2005, right? New appliances, new when? Last year, cool, brand new appliances in 2021. That's what's going in my listing. Are you guys catching all of this? All right, now questions that you can ask them to look for motivation. Juanita, when your home sells, where are you moving to? Doesn't matter the answer. When would you like to get there? I'm moving to Tampa. What's in Tampa? Same. Don't respond, that's awesome, okay? Because remember, it may not be awesome. Maybe they're moving to Tampa to take care of a sick parent, right? I'm moving to Tampa. What's taking you to Tampa? Family. How soon would you like to be there, right? Just out of curiosity, if your home doesn't sell, what's plan B? Ask that question. Now, if you hear, I'm going to rent it. Here's what I want you to say. Yeah, that, that sounds great. I think that's a great option. The rental market is just as hot as, as the sales market. However, before you rent your home, just one question. What's your greatest fear? Make them ask, answer the question. Now, here's what I want to hear. I want to hear... Well, I hadn't thought about that. Hmm. I guess somebody moves in and they're not paying their rent and I have to evict them. I wouldn't want that to happen. My response is, yeah, that could happen. 
You can also get your house back with lots of damage. And now you're spending ten, twenty thousand dollars to fix the house, and it took six months to, ev to evict the renter. Now, if that happened, how would you feel about that? I wouldn't like it. Well, then don't rent your house. You see, if you're going to rent your home, you have to have an investor's mindset. An investor owns multiple rental properties, and they go in knowing that they might have to evict and they might have to spend money to fix up. So renting may not be the best option. Okay? If their home has been on the market for a little while, and I know in today's market, homes are selling fast, even for sell by owners, don't have a limited mindset around this. They should hire you. They need to hire you. They're better off hiring you than selling their home. If the home's been available for a little while, have you had any offers? If they respond with, yeah, but you know, low balls. Okay. What does an offer look like that you would accept? You're selling your home for $700,000. If you got an offer tomorrow for $680,000, what would you do? What kind of feedback are you hearing from the people who are looking at your home? Now pay attention, you're gonna like this one. They're gonna say, everybody loves my home because that's what everybody's gonna say because they're the owner. And the response to that is, is it possible that if I called them and asked them what they thought as a real estate agent, if I called everyone who looked at your home and asked them what they thought, is it possible they might give me different feedback? Mm. How about we do this? What if I give you a sign-in sheet and you can have the buyer sign in, get their contact information, wake up, <laughs> get their contact information, and I'll pop by in a couple of days and pick up that sign-in sheet for you, and I'll call the buyers for you and get feedback. Would that be valuable? What do you have? You have a list of buyers, and you're conveying, I care about you, you can trust me, I know what I'm doing. Now, before you leave, the exit conversation is how you set up the next conversation. You guys get this? And the exit conversation, Hervé, is, Hervé, thank you for showing me your home. You have a beautiful home. I'm positive it'll sell. And I'm going to work really hard to find a buyer for you. Now, before I leave, can I ask you a couple of questions? Cool. First question, Hervé, in my experience, most homeowners who are selling their home by owner like you have a game plan for how long they're going to sell by owner before they hire a professional like me. Can I ask, what's your game plan? 30 days. Cool. I'm positive it'll sell in the next 30 days. You have a beautiful home. Uh, one more question. Okay, cool. You know, again, my experience, most homeowners who are selling by owner are selling by owner in order to save on the fee. Is that the reason you're selling by owner? They're gonna say yes. Now, don't be surprised if you hear no, it's because I don't know of any good real estate agents. Don't be surprised. Now, when you hear yes, the response to that is sure, that makes sense. And when we schedule the appointment, you shared with me that if a, if a real estate agent like me were to bring you an offer, Clarissa, you mentioned that you would pay them 3% for bringing you a buyer, right? Yeah. So the difference between selling your home by owner and working with a professional like me is just 3%, not 6%, right? You're dropping a bomb. You're dropping a bomb and walking away. If it's a $500,000 home, it's not gonna cost them $30,000 to hire a realtor, it's gonna cost 15. And if you could sell their home in 30 days and it took them 90 days to sell their home, what's the additional holding cost for the additional 60 days? If the average for sell by owner is getting 98% of the asking price, and that's a lot, 
okay? And you're getting 100% of the asking price or more and selling the home in half the time, is it possible they're actually making more money with you than they would selling the home on their own? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Now, once their property is under contract, is it sold? Say no. According to the National Association of Realtors, one third, 33%. Of homes that are sold without a real estate agent close successfully. Two thirds of every home that's sold with one real estate agent closes successfully. And a home that is listed by a realtor on average in today's market closes 80% of the time. That's still not good. And I'm closing. 98% of the contracts I get, or we are closing 98% of the con contracts we get. You're dropping bombs. Guys, get it? Mm -hmm. Every single for sale by owner should hire you. Every single one. Nobody should sell their home by owner. The only reason they're selling their home by owner is because you're not getting in front of them and sharing this information. You're not giving them an opportunity to make a new decision based on new information because you're not sharing this information. Because somebody told you that for sell by owners don't need to hire a realtor. Not true, 100%, they do. Michael Topo, I saw your hand up. Talk to me. Let's go back to the, to the sign-in sheet. Mm -hmm. um, would you have it with you or 